Due to popular requests, we're going to do a quick follow-up video, rapid question and answer style, where we just address some of the questions that we had in relation to our how to defend against dog attacks. So this is like a follow-up part two quick video. Thanks for the great comments and questions we received on the first video. I'm sorry that we can't address them all. Okay, locked bites or latched on bites. First thing is, if you have to sacrifice getting bitten, you want to get bitten in either outside of the forearm or outside of the shin. So in the first video I showed how to defend, basically, so that you would be protecting the vital areas and protecting your fingers by making a fist and offering up the outside of the forearm or the outside of the shin if you need to get bitten. If you get bitten and it's latched on on your shin, get into the collar twist and try to choke the dog out until it releases the grip or grab the hind legs and or the tail whichever one you can reach the back of the dog pick it up you know do whatever you have to do strike while you pick up the hind legs that's going to distract the dog and probably get it to release the grip but basically you're trying to disorient and put the dog in a weaker position where it's not in its predator position attacking you if you get bitten on the forearm, drive your hips back, get low, charge at the dog, and kick the stomach. Avoid kicking with the toes, but use the bottom of the foot and the outside of the foot, because that's where it can withstand the most impact safely. If you have a dog that's lashed onto a bite, do not try to rip away from the bite, because that's just going to tear your flesh and cause more damage. It's gonna be instinctual for some people. They panic and they're gonna try to tear out, but if it's latched on, don't do that. Actually go into the bite more. Instead of trying to pull away, I'm actually gonna shove my arm more into the dog's mouth as I go at it. Anything where you're going like through the mouth and scraping against the teeth, you can just cause more damage. So I would just pull firm and then charge at the dog and do one of the striking techniques that I was explaining before. But don't try to rip your arm or leg out from a latched on bite. If you have a short stick or a walking stick, that's also extremely effective, but you might want to try a different technique. The technique I taught, which was the broomstick grip, I'll call it, just like if you're sweeping, that can still work for a short stick. I can still hold this, I just choke up on it a little bit more, and I can still use the same technique. Actually, I have more control over it. It's just that I don't have as much reach. You can jab, still use that. You can still strike low. If you come around the sides, and then you can just slide your hands down and come over the top. You can do all of that relatively easily and quickly with minimum movement. So it's a very efficient way to use either a long or a short stick. Another technique that I like to recommend with a shorter stick or a cane or a walking stick is we'll just call it the rifle grip, okay? So it's basically like this, it's like if you're gonna shoot a rifle. So with this grip, you can just keep it in close to your body and you can really do some damage just raking back and forth. Just imagine this raking across at someone's ribs or like a dog's ribs or stomach areas. You can also jab, but I like to just use this because it requires no muscular strength you're using the stick in your body as a unity so you can just move rotate back and forth like this and that really hurts if you make contact with that you can also up and down so boom 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 and lastly you can use it as a block or a hold off i can just i can use it as a blocking device as well okay so that technique is just super simple and practical and doesn't require much skill at all. You can just practice for a little bit and match that very quickly. Next was people who are maybe smaller or afraid about getting knocked down onto the ground. The first thing is definitely try to avoid getting knocked down, taken down to the ground by a dog. And the way to do that is, is all in your stance and how to achieve maximum balance and stability. When something's coming at you, you need to basically go at it. So you need to be in not defense behavior, but in predator behavior. So I'm not gonna do this, 
I'm going to still defend myself, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my butt way back behind my ribs because this is a more stable position. I need to be in a position ready to move forward as opposed to getting knocked backwards. And it's going to be much harder to fall down. Even if I lose my grip and I, I slip like this, it's easier for me to get back up like this than if I'm like this and I get knocked on my back. This is a safer position. Just think of an athletic predator stance, cat ready to pounce stance. If you do get knocked down, you want to be off your back because again, that's a prey position and you want to try to get back to a predator position. So you want to try to get back to your all fours position as, as quickly as you can. And so just ball up, get compact and just think shooting your butt back. So whether that's straight back or up in the air, you want to get in a position where you have more leverage. You don't have much leverage when you're like this, especially with a dog that's a lot more agile. If you're on the ground and you're in a desperate situation and you just need to protect yourself from, from getting bitten, then the safest, most secure position is the innate fetal position. So ball up, protect yourself, at the same time, deliver strikes with this part or this part of your fist. And I wouldn't do kicks at that point because you don't want to expose like your thighs when you get bitten, you, get, you can bleed out and you need your knees to protect your vitals. So I would stay like this, protect my head with one arm in the cross guard that I taught in the first video in the standing variation, protect my head and then striking like this. And as soon as I have daylight, trying to get back, protecting my head, trying to get back to my feet where I can now implement one of the other techniques that I taught earlier. You want to show generally that you don't want their space. You're not trying to threaten their space, but you own the space you stand in. That's the energy you need to convey. And you need to do that with balanced energy. In a situation where dogs are heightened, state of arousal, and fearful, ready to attack, you don't want to bring more excitement to the situation, nervousness, stress, fear, anxiety, screaming unnecessarily. You want to bring uh, relaxed intensity, balanced energy to the situation as much as possible. The energy 100% matters. The energy that you convey, and it's not something that you can just choose. That's why in the first video I also said, it's something you need to practice and it's something that you need to cultivate maybe with some other types of training and some other type of practice where you have the ability to actually demonstrate that you're relaxed and calm and confident within yourself. It's not something that you can just fake. You can try to fake it, but animals are more perceptive in a lot of cases than human beings and they're going to read what the true you is. So the energy matters. The A stood for avoid, which means avoiding having the awareness to not put yourself in dangerous dog attack situations to begin with, to the best of your ability. The B was bolt, which meant if you see a situation early enough and you can bolt, meaning get away, run away, before the dog starts attacking you or starts chasing you, that's what the bolt stands for. Nowhere in the first video that I say, try to outrun a dog, I specifically said, and if you just run while a dog is chasing you, then the instincts of the dog are gonna take over and they are definitely gonna chase you and you're probably not gonna outrun a dog unless you're already further enough away. And the C stood for com confront, which was an intro to some practical strategies that you could use in most common dog attack scenarios. I specified also that it was still no guarantee. You might get bitten, but this is a way to minimize the damage and to put yourself in the least risky situation possible when you have to confront an animal. Being against a dog is already a disadvantaged position. Being against multiple dogs or a pack is even worse. So this is where I, I really recommend having a stick. If you're gonna be walking anywhere, or going anywhere, where there's stray dogs that can come at you in packs, get used to carrying a walking stick, a cane, a staff, something. The 
first thing is really the energy 100% matters. Try to remain as calm as possible. You need to demonstrate that you own your space. It doesn't matter, even if you feel threatened, you need to give off the vibe that you don't feel threatened. This is your space. Don't try to make eye contact with any of the dogs, but see them all in your peripheral vision and just demonstrate that this is my space. I don't want your space, but this is my space. You can't come in my space. So what I would do is also put down a symbolic barrier. It might not do anything, but it might do something. I've seen it do something before, but let's say you had a purse or, or a backpack or a water bottle even. If you have nothing, pretend you have, you're putting something down. It might still work. Try to identify the alpha dog in the pack because the other dogs are likely to take the lead of that dog. So that's the one you wanna to try to get to leave you alone. Take something off you, even if it's a sweater, something, put it down as a symbolic barrier in between you and the dog. I would see all the dogs in my peripheral vision, but I would direct my energy more at the leader of the pack and just do something very focused and going towards the dog and take a step, a, a step back, but still in a forward moving posture. So when I'm walking back, I'm not walking away. I'm walking back, but I'm still in a forward moving posture and I'm giving my warning and walking back. Now, if a dog attacks you, you have to be ready to go to war with your stick. So hopefully you have one. If not, be ready to offer up your forearms and your shins and just yell for help. Do whatever you have to at that point, but hopefully you have a stick and you can use either of the techniques that I mentioned. You can do quite a lot with a stick if you practice using it and you make it a part of you, make it an extension of you, you can really hold off multiple attackers, dogs or otherwise with a stick and this type of practical use that I'm showing. The reason I'm teaching these two basic techniques and I recommend sticking to them is because wild swinging is risky for many reasons. You swing and swing and every time you do a wild swing you're just opening yourself up. Look how many quick shots I can get whereas if I'm swinging there's a lot more time in between and you also risk swinging and letting go of the stick. You're going to be in a panic situation so you want to eliminate as much potential for error as possible. So just keep it simple, minimum movement to get the job done and just stick with the techniques that are gonna minimize your chance of making a fatal mistake. The last thing I'm gonna try to address that came up several times are all these questions or comments that came into the same category of, you have to be agile and fit to do those techniques. What if someone's too old and frail? What if someone is too young, like a young child? What if somebody's handicapped even? Well, against a, an attacking dog, pretty much everybody's handicapped because handicapped means physically disadvantaged, at a disadvantage. So it's really just a matter of degree. In the physical world that we live in, it requires physical competence. It actually takes physical ability and physical fitness to live in the real world. So. Regardless of the lifestyle that you may have the privilege of living, I still think it's extremely important to maintain some level of physical fitness and physical agility. Real world fitness, we're not talking about gym fitness or six minute abs, we're talking about the ability to actually do things and just manage your body and carry it through space with some degree of confidence. In terms of being physically disadvantaged, whether that's because it's a child or an elderly person or somebody with a handicap, don't be in the mindset of drawing conclusions too quickly because I've seen so-called handicapped people missing limbs that are more physically active and more physically fit and able than people with all of their limbs who just choose not to make the most of the gifts that they have. I've also seen very young children be able to manage their body and carry their body through space better than people who spend hours a week at the gym building giant muscles that may be able to pick up big weights, but that's about it. They can't do much practical movement outside of a gym. It's really about practical fitness and practical ability. And no matter what age or what level you're currently at, you can make improvements in that area. If you do proper training, if you take on a proper process, and that's actually what our niche is. That's what we focus on and that's what I'm most passionate about. So. If you're somebody that wants to improve your practical fitness, 
in a way that is safe, in a way that is not going to deteriorate your joints and not, not just fitness for the sake of getting exercise, but keeping yourself physically well, keeping your body at a certain state of ease, keeping your, your joints and your spine decompressed so that you're not limited by back pain and joint pain. Just if you need to be able to run up the stairs or climb up on something to get away from a dog, you're able to do stuff with your body and you can make progress no matter what level you're at. So reach out to us at info at athleticengineering.ca and tell us you want to get help and we can discuss the options that are available to you and you can see if you can utilize that. We're athletic engineering, but we don't just train competitive athletes and we don't just train young athletes. Yes, that's a big part of our demographic and our target, but a lot of my clients are not that. They're just regular people who do regular things and not necessarily competitive athletes. One of the people who I provide a program for regularly is my own mom. She's turning 70 years old next year and she can hang from a pull-up bar for a minute or longer. She can run up and down stairs, carry heavy bags of mulch. You can, if you do the right things, keep yourself physically able and I recommend that no matter what level you're at or no matter what you've been told or no matter what results you may have seen up until now, if you are willing to look at things with fresh eyes, then you can make positive transformation. <music> Lastly, there are a lot of comments about irresponsible dog owners and that's no question true. There are way too many people who just think they can go and get any dog and it's just gonna be a loving companion and everything's gonna be fine. If you're a dog owner, you need to be a responsible dog owner, please, because there are people that don't wanna go and take their dog to the park because they have their dog on a leash and they're being responsible, but some other idiot comes and their dog, their pit bull or whatever dog, it doesn't matter what breed, is off the leash and that's just not right. Please be responsible with your dogs. The other thing is, it's not just about a leash. You can't have a child or somebody that is not physically able to handle a large, strong dog walking a dog on a leash that they have no business walking because if that dog decides to take off and you can't hold it, then you shouldn't have that dog because you're putting other people at risk. So you must be able to handle and control the dog that you have and to the people who uh, are on the other end of that, I hope the tips in this video will help you prevent a situation that should have been otherwise avoided by responsible pet handling. Okay, that's it. Thanks for all your wonderful comments. Be safe, be responsible, be ready. Take care. Yeah, it's Toby, come here. Come here. Here. Sit. Stay. Toby. Sit. Good boy. Dash, drop it. Good boy. Toby. Up. Grip. Grip. Grip.